Hi you guys, Lindsay here. Welcome back to my channel, Inside the Hem. Did you guys notice hey, my cute little accessory that I am wearing today? This is a DIY turban headband and you guys, I am addicted to these. Um, full disclosure, I did just wash my hair today so today's not a great example, but I have been able to extend my washes, my the time between I wash my hair easily two or three days and I still feel really cute and really fashionable whenever I slap on one of these turban headbands. I've worn them to the gym, to yoga, I've worn them to the pool, I've worn them out to run errands. I think they can really dress up a basic outfit um, and you can make them in no time flat with barely any fabric at all. So today's video is a tutorial to show you how to make one of these on your own. Um, in my opinion, it is a very well designed um, design in that the top is literally knotted. It's not multiple layers looped through and then creating this really bulky headband. This is literally, you know, two layers of fabric sandwiched together um, and then looped together. There's a lot of really neat tricks in this tutorial for how to achieve a really great clean finish, both up here with the little knotted section as well as the um, elastic casing and how to get these two sections um, attached together with no raw edges showing whatsoever and just a super, super clean finish all around. Very, very professional in my opinion. Um, so let's cut to the tutorial. Okay, to get started, you need to cut out your pattern pieces. Um, very simple, we've got one piece here that's 17 inches by four and a half inches, and you need to cut two of those. Um, ideally, you do it out of the same fabric. I'm just using very different fabrics here um, so that you guys can tell one piece from the other when we start assembling it. Um, but feel free to be creative. Who knows? Maybe somebody wants an orange and black and blue and green headband. You never know. Um, Okay, so you need two of these, 17 and a half by four and a half, and I'll have all these measurements in the description box, so don't feel like you have to run and grab a pen real quick. Um, this piece here is 11 and a quarter inches by two and a half inches, and then you need a seven inch piece of one inch elastic. Um, so I've got all of those things cut out here, and then you also need to add a couple of notches um, you don't need to be too, too precise about it, but if you are curious, my notches are placed. Hold, please. Um, let's see, we've got them set at roughly seven and a half inches in from the edge, and then there's two inches in between them. So find the seven and a half inch mark and then go over two more inches and place your other notch. And you need to snip those into the fabric, which I'm going to do right now. And our very first step actually is going to be sewing in between these two notches. And I'll show you how to lay out the fabric. So you want to take your fabric pieces and you're going to lay them right sides together. Same for this one, right sides together, and you're gonna sew in between the two notches, so that little two inch section. Um, all of our seam allowances on this are a quarter inch, so quarter inch seam allowances, and sew between the two notches on both of these pieces. And then if you want to go ahead and get a head start on this, you can also sew this piece right sides together the entire length of the piece. Okay, you can see we have attached um, right sides together in between the two notches, um, both of the larger rectangles, and then sewn all the way across the long edge of the shorter rectangle. You're gonna need to use your point turner or whatever you use to turn this one right sides out. 
These guys need to get turned right sides out as well, and it's very easy to do with just your fingers. Um, like so, and now you can see you have a lovely little seam there in the middle. Same with this guy. And then this guy. Um, okay, so you are going to want to press this one with the seam centered um, along the width. So not with the seam on the edge. I mean, I guess you could, but that's not how the purchased one was. So we're trying to follow that one as, as closely as possible. So you want to press this like this, and then also you can press these little guys down as well. Okay, these are all pressed and ready to go. We're actually gonna set these two pieces aside for the time being and only work with one of our larger rectangles. So you're gonna take one of the larger rectangles and you are gonna place it right sides together along the um, short end, but we're actually gonna sew this longer side here. And this gets a little bit fidgety and finicky, but it can be done, um, and it helps if you made those um, notches in your um, fabric because it works as a bit of a, a hinge. Um, so we've obviously already got this seam sewn, so we just need to start here at this corner and sew at a quarter inch seam allowance all along this edge, and then you turn it along the other end and so this long edge. So basically what you're trying to do is sew this entire long edge all the way around like so. You just have to kind of do it in two parts because of the little seam that we already have there in the middle. So. Let me pin this and show you what it looks like. So see, it really does start to come together once you manipulate the fabric a little bit. And just pin all along this edge, keeping the short end, um, the raw edges of the short end even as well. like so all right so that's one side then you do the same thing for the other side keeping that little seam the little bubbly part right there tucked away out of your seam line and it takes a little of maneuvering but You'll get it. Cool. Let's get the other side. And then fill in everything in the middle with our pins. Okay, one more. All right, cool. See how that is pinned? So you're gonna sew all along this edge and then continue your seam line all the way down this edge here. I'll show you what that looks like one second. Okay, so here we've got our little piece all sewn along the raw edge. You can see what it looks like up close with that little part there. And here's our other 
seam line that we did in the very first step. So they all kind of converge in this one little area here. Okay, so now we want to turn this out. And what you've ended up with is a one side of your turban with a hole, but sewn, <laughs> um, little hole in the middle. See? All right, so let's see. You can turn your seam line, that very first seam line that we made, into the middle if you want. Although it doesn't really matter in the end because it kind of gets all bunched up together anyways. Okay, see that? All right, so now um, you can try and press this as far as you can get your iron up, into, up in this area um, just to have a smooth seam line there. Okay, so the next step is to take your other long rectangle that is right side out and you are going to feed that through the hole that you have at the top of this first little tube, like so. And center the hole um, along the little two inch seam line that you already have made. Then position it so that you can turn this right sides together, just like we did before like so, except you're going to do this in two parts. So the first part is just like last time, you sew this half of the rectangle all the way up until these little pieces meet at the top, right? And then you're gonna tuck the first one into the second one before you sew up the second side. So let me show you that step by step. Okay, let's do one of these sides. Okay, I like to do this in two separate sessions at the um, sewing machine. So I'm going to go ahead and sew up this seam first. Okay, you can see I've got this first seam, this one side of the second rectangle all sewn together and this side is still open. So you want to take the first rectangle we sewed, tuck it into the second one, find the raw edges, and again, match up those little notches like so and pin keeping the first rectangle tucked in completely. Okay, so now we've got the second side all pinned together with the first rectangle completely tucked inside here. So head to your machine and sew up this last side. Okay, so now we've got that second side of the second rectangle totally sewn. And here is where the magic happens. When you turn this right side out, like magic, you have the top knot of your turban. Isn't that so cool? So you can futz with these and get your um, seam lines wherever you want them. I like to place them, I guess, on what would be the top and bottom of the headband. But you can position them any way you want. Um, but this is what seems most natural to me, like what the fabric wants to do um, is be in there like that. So let me go press this and I'll be right back. Okay, there we have it. And we're not really looking for perfection here. I mean, if this little knot area is messy, that's fine. Um, it, it, you know, it is kind of like a turban look, so um, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so the next step is to um, make the elastic band for what will be like the nape of your neck. So you need to grab the shorter rectangle that we've already sewn together, turned and pressed, and you are going to be inserting this elastic 
through one end when the raw edge meets up with this side based across there continue to pull it through and baste across this edge as well i like to use one of my elastic threaders these are made by dritz they're awesome i featured them in a favorites video not too long ago um, i will put a link in the description box so you can easily find them but they're awesome they come in all kinds of different sizes um, and just make threading elastic a breeze We've got it matched up with the one edge here. Oops. Okay, like so. I'm gonna go baste across this small edge here. Okay, that is basted through our fabric and our elastic. Nothing fancy. Continue to pull all of this through the casing like so. And match up these raw edges, like so. And then go baste across this edge here. Okay, there we go. We've got our elastic casing. Give it a few tugs so that the um, fabric evenly distributes itself along the width of the elastic. Okay, so now it doesn't really matter which side becomes the outside and which side becomes the inside, but it does matter to me anyways, um, that you determine that you pick one and make sure that the seam line that's along here ends up being on the inside of the headband. If you don't care about that, then don't worry about that. Match up the seam lines along the width of the short end, then place your elastic along the edge there, centering the elastic with that seam. Then you want to pin this to hold it in place, and you're going to baste across this edge just like you did before. Okay, here is another magical step that we are about to take. Um, in order to completely encase this raw edge and make sure that you only see a pretty side um, of all of this whenever your um, headband is done. So you want to fold your fabric, the big rectangle, over the edge of the elastic casing like so, right? Then you're gonna have a little bit of overhang where this piece is longer than the elastic casing. You simply fold that back like so. So we've got a little like modified bias tape, double fold bias tape kind of. You've just folded this edge over like this and then fold this back so that it's in line with the other edge of the elastic. You can pin that if you want to hold it in place. It's a little hard to pin through all these edges, so uh, maybe, let's see, do I have binding clips nearby? No, I don't. Okay, so we're just going to hold it with our hands. Um, then you fold the other side, right, over the edge, like so, and then fold this edge back. And it's completely okay if the two folded back sections are not equal length. What's most important is that this little sandwich that you're making is just all even along the edges. So you've got this little number here. Let's try and pin this one. All right, like so. Perfect, okay, so now you're gonna to want to sew this raw edge here. Sew over it a few times. Um, this is where most of the um, pressure and tension is going to be placed on this piece. So you want to make sure this is really, really secure. Okay, there you have it. Um, to help get through all these layers, you probably want to use 
something that they call a hump jumper. And basically when you have fed this through your machine, like so, you place this little guy underneath the pressure foot and it helps kind of keep everything in similar thickness so that your feed dogs can work to push it all through. Um, I will have a link for this in the description box too. And I don't even know if there is like one brand that sells them versus another. I have had these since I don't know when, but I'll have a link in the description box for some kind of hump jumper that you can use. Either way, okay, so now we're here for another magical moment where you pull this right sides out and you get this beautiful finish with no raw edges. How cool is that, right? Super, super cool, super, super nice and well done if i do say so myself okay so now we want to be very careful because now we've established a right side right and we don't want this thing to end up twisted so you want to keep everything in line and then take the right side of your elastic casing which does not have the seam and place it along this edge here and then you want to do the exact same thing based across this edge fold this fold a corner back fold this over fold another corner back, and then secure all of this with several rows of stitches. Okay, so I have sewn all of those layers together, and you're just gonna pull your elastic to get all of that to the inside like so, then flip it so that the um, smooth side, the unseamed side of the elastic casing is facing in the outside. And just like that, you have a super cool turban headband made from woven scraps, hopefully. Um, I mean, you guys can get one of these made with less than a fat quarter of fabric um, and hopefully have one that matches all of your outfits. And there you have it. It was easier than you thought it would be, right? So I want to see yours. If you make one of these, please tag me in your social media posts. Um, I'm at Inside the Hem if you aren't following me already. Um, and I'd like to see your versions. I can't wait to pair up different fabric scraps with different outfits or maybe even possibly do a matchy matchy situation where I have a matching headband to my dress or top or whatever. Um, so you'll be seeing me posting um, a lot about these. I'm going to be making a ton and I hope you will too. Um, but in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and entertaining and I'll see you all very soon. Bye!